What's up? This is Xander Rose. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoy the content. One thing I've realized from my analytics is that over 90% of y'all do not subscribe to the channel and you're likely just seeing these videos either from search or from your homepage to make sure that you can see all the content that I've put out that you enjoy. Make sure to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so that you know whenever I release a video in the future. But without further ado, let's get to the content. What is up YouTube? This is Xander Rose back again with another production slash walkthrough type of uh, tutorial deal we got here. Today we're going to be looking at my track. It's not the last one that came out, but two tracks ago, two releases ago called Darkness. It's kind of a Lane 8 inspired dealio here. And uh, I was listening to a lot of Lane 8 at the time. And um, yeah, I actually got to see him live in concert before all this uh, crazy coronavirus stuff happened, which is actually kind of good for uh, you guys because I will be making a lot more video content um, given that I uh, can't be playing shows and the whatnot. So just a quick PSA before we dive straight into things. Uh, as I mentioned, there aren't, I'm not really playing any events or anything um, coming up because of the COVID-19 stuff going on. Uh, but I do have a big live stream from 6 to or 5 to 11 p.m. Pacific time happening Saturday, March 21st. So uh, the link and whatnot to all of that will be in, in the thing below. Over 500 people have already RSVP'd to the Facebook event. So I uh, highly encourage you to do the same. You can get a little watch party of your friendos together and watch that. We'll have a bunch of different DJs uh, from my home city of Vancouver playing um so yeah you can enjoy that also if you're uh new to the channel just just gently tap that subscribe button wouldn't you and uh you know if you're if you've been here before do the same thing that like button you know you already know you like my content you already subscribed might as well just hit hit not even hit it just give it a nice little caress down there anyways uh let's jump into the actual content while you're watching this video here's the project file so I'm going to sound identical to obviously the finished product because it's not mixed and mastered. But what you'll notice is not a lot going on in the in terms of like the layers of, of production. And it's because there's a ton of automation going on down here. So that's kind of the bulk of, of what's happening in this uh, in this production. That's kind of where all the layers and whatnot come from. But surprisingly, it's not a lot of like effects and stuff. Right. Um, so we'll get into that. We'll start off with the vocal which sounds like, let me just make sure all these are on. Do, 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 Okay, so the vocal completely dry. It's from Splice. You can listen to it. It's actually pitched down from the original sample, so it sounds like this. me in the dark, in the dark. It's pitched down like two full steps, so four semitones. Um, but yeah, because of that, I use this free plugin, which I use all the time called M auto pitch and it changes the format. If you don't know a lot about vocals, basically your, your vocal cords is human and the structure of your, you know, throat and chest, etc., uh, kind of applies an EQ curve to the sound that you're producing. And when you just pitch a vocal, it doesn't maintain the consistency of that EQ curve because as a person, I could talk way down here. Or I could talk way up here. The same EQ curve is being applied regardless of how I'm speaking. It's just the pitch that's that's changing, but it's being boosted and lowered in exactly the same way. Um, so if there's like a small bump at two, 2 K Hertz, it's happening regardless of if I'm speaking lowly or, or highly. Obviously the pitch I'm speaking will you know, if I land straight on uh, 2K Hertz, then it will be accentuated. But um, that's the basic concept. So when you pitch a vocal as a sample, you're not maintaining um, that structural EQing that's happening, which is called a formant. So that's what the formant is for. And when I put this up, you'll notice it'll sound feminine again. So without, me in the dark, with, in the darkness. So she sounds more feminine again. Then we're just compressing, distorting, saturating it with Sustrata. Then one of my favorite plugins, CLA Vocals. In the dark, in the 
Now this uh, preset that I use here, body double, I think I turn off the reverb and delay from it. But it's basically like a chorus effect. Um, yeah, it's just doing EQing, compression, and stereo widening, but it's, I don't know, for some reason, you don't really get the same effect on other presets, but this one uh, creates that chorusy effect. Then we've got uh, a reverb that's quite large. If we put it up to 100%, it sounds like this. In the dark, in the and I pull it back to here. So still quite a lot um, reverberance, you know, staying there. But uh, yeah. Then we have a delay. Kill me in the dark, in the darkness. And it's kind of because of these long pauses in the sample that I wanted to create this kind of bed of sound with the vocal. That's kind of the objective. And then finally, this EQ that's just low cutting it. So it doesn't fight with the bass or whatever. So that's it for the vocal. Next, we'll move on to the drums. Now, this uh, track actually started with me just trying to figure out how to make the Medusa like brass stab sound. Um, and I was going to, I wanted it for like a bass house slash G house track. So the drums I had also made already. And that's why they sound very, um, not very like lane eight organic style. They, they sound very inorganic, like, uh, like Shami or, or, uh, something like that. Here's a preview. So almost like a future house <laughs> track, you know, and um, not much to say about them, to be honest. It's, you know, just some slight panning on the hats versus the claps and the perk um, to give everything a lot of space. That's what I typically do. Uh, if we look at the bus, they don't have much going on individually other than panning. Their bus, we've got compression from Sound Goodizer, compression distortion saturation from uh, Sausage Fattener, that same reverb trick but this time with a much tighter kind of drum room reverb uh, that we did on the vocal, a low cut, and then a filter that's automated at the start of the song. So really like not anything complicated going on with this other than you'll notice. This is the first drop. It just has the atmospheric kind of perk and then the rest of the drums come in here with a letter hi-hat and the heavier hi-hat. Then the second drop is just the kick for a while, then kick and hi-hat. And then I start bringing in the perk and finally the clap at the end. So really, again, that was just kind of after studying a bunch of um, this never happened records. That's kind of what I noticed they do a lot. Um, and then there's some automation where it's being low passed and it's also low cut right on the bus so that kind of opens it up in the beginning so that you can just focus on the melodic parts and it smoothly comes in and then we have some perk for the build up that's just snares basically <laughs> and that's it so with uh with all of that out of the way i think i'll hit the um yeah the effects next because there's more stuff going on in like the melodic elements that I want to cover in more detail. So this will be a little bit faster. So we have the this kind of downlifter from Blau and then I just keep this like white noise throughout. Um, very, very simple stuff. All very, very simple. Not, not really much to explain there. We had this atmosphere preset. Let's see if I can find that pattern six. This is an evolution of sound preset, I believe. Looks like that. And I just tweaked it to be very, I think I changed it so that this is like four bars because before it was a lot faster. It was like a bar or something. But I wanted it to take a really long time. Um, I think it works well, you know, with all the rest of the kind of atmosphere going on. Yep, 
Yeah. So the crux of the song, which was that brass thing that I was mentioning before, sounds like this. And here I made it in this patch. Um, so you'll see that it, it says evolution of sound. It, it originally started as a patch that I found that was kind of similar-ish. Um, to what I was going for, and then I really just kind of messed with the ADSR a lot to have this really long sustaining release um, to make this sound. And then also, if you mess with the macro one, it'll change the cutoff of this reverb filter. Which creates a lot of cool sounds. But I just wanted it there. I actually like some of these other locations a lot. They sound cool, so I might use them in future songs, but yeah. And uh, I outlined this chord progression. Again, just with the intent that this would be like the break of, of any other regular song. Um, and then what I did to add low into it was I duplicated it and... So this is like basically the same thing, um, but I, uh, or no, sorry, it started from a different preset actually that I just thought sounded, oh, you know what it is? It's the, this is the last sub um, you'll ever need preset, I think. And then I just added this long release to it. And I don't think it changed much else alone. It sounds like this. And the long releases were designed to cover exactly like this amount of space, whatever the longest break was um, to lead into each other. And I think, yeah, I think I just monoed and stuff. And together it sounds like this. Just... And so there are obviously, um, High pass uh, leading up into the the build up, and they have uh, side chaining going on in the drop. And one of the differences too is that um, this lower and uh, mid bass actually doesn't have a low cut until the drop when this sub is introduced. And here, you know, there's basically very, very minimal um, stuff being done to any of them. It's reverb and EQing, but it's mostly in the in the patches uh, themselves in Serum where they're being changed. And the reason that I do that, why I separate it, is because in the verse I don't care much about like, or the breaks I don't care much about the technical aspect of the bass relationship and you know getting as loud as possible um but in the drop i do so i care about the sub being isolated and hitting you know you see how it drops down in the midi um to make sure that it's in the optimal range but i don't want to lose the melodic intent of what the midi was trying to do so that's why i just have the low cut of the mid bass which has upper harmonics in it if we listen to it uh, alone So they're not like entirely overlapped. So that way it doesn't uh, interfere with what I was trying to accomplish. And they all sound really nice together. I don't think they do much in terms of all these automations. The automations are more for these uh, other two guys. So we'll go into that and we'll start with the first one. Originally, this was the only thing I had after having um, the, uh, the main stab.
So it looks like this. And that was, I think, made just by putting in the chords and then doing the auto arpeggiate thingy in, in FL, which I think is Alt A or something like that. Um, and it will make an arp it'll arpeggiate like chords that are in the MIDI for you. Uh, and then I just edited them to, you know, for where it didn't really make sense or whatever. But it's changing a lot throughout the song. So if you listen at the start. So you'll notice it's like these macros that were set up from this um, pluck, which I think I edited just to... Um, yeah, I think I just edited it in general to, to fine tune it, but I always work off of these presets, especially the ones from uh, from Evolution of Sound. They're just really good. And here you see it. So it's got a reverb that's being automated, kickstart that's being automated, um, and this filter that's opening up, right? So that kind of opens up. So it's controlling things like its attack speed and whatnot, and I really just dialed those in by looping the song over and over again, and just thinking, where do I want this to go? And just penciling in you know, each step as I went along. And it was very tedious. So this is a good example of where it's kind of well used. So I kind of cut all the effects right for this pre-drop, and then I introduce them, you know, some of them again, and it continues out. So here's kind of the most intense part of the drop is where it's getting the most intense, and then in the break, chills out, gets a lot more airier again. And here it's back in full force with, you know, it's very very dry, forward in in the mix. And that's on the second drop, and uh, you know you'll see that a little bit more how it plays. So, anyways, I, like like I said, this was the first sound after. Originally, I had just this as the the um, the song. And my friends were like, it sounds great, but it sounds like it's missing something. And what it was missing was this other element, which is, do, do, do. again, another preset that's just modified that you hear throughout the song. And this is, uh, it's meant to be an imitation of the pluck from Relax by Rez, which is quite aggressive. So I think I toned down, uh, like the distortion and stuff on it. But to me, it was this, it sounded more like this, like kind of lo fi sound that I thought was really interesting and contrasted with the airy. And again, it's like, going through a lot of chorus changes, a lot of these macros. You know, here, for the second drop, pulling back quite a lot. And so this, I like this sound so much. I was like, I want that to be the constant sound along with that other pluck. Because um, they just play so well together, I think, in so many different parts of the song. You know, I could bring it in 
I could bring it closer in to the listener any time that I pull that other pluck back and make that more airy. So they really had a, have a nice back to forth in it. And then the last element that I added was just this um, airy kind of top pad. To add some kind of intensity to the second drop. And it's very, very pulled back. Um, Break Melody, Don't Cry. It's a great, <laughs> great name for it. And here it is, reverbed, really pushed to the sides with the stereo enhancer. As you can see, it's almost fully uh, stereo. Yeah, and I think, like, overall, like I said, it, this, this song was... Um, it came through just listening over and over and over and over and over again to it, making small adjustments and and feeling where I wanted the different elements to go, how I wanted them to play with each other. But this was really an inspired um, inspired work. Like it came to me uh, as lame as that sounds, <laughs> but it wasn't hard to produce. Is my point. And you can really hear like, because it's just that kick, the white noise and whatnot are really doing a lot of work to fill out that space, which is really nice. So yeah, uh, if you have any questions about the track that I didn't really answer by going through it, feel free to ask them down below. Let me know what you think of the song. Like I said, uh, I, you know, it's quite different than the other tracks I've made. I've only really made one other song similar to this um, that I entered in a remix contest. But other than that, uh, they've all been kind of G House Bass House. Uh, this got a good reception, um, and I got some good feed, some positive feedback on it from uh, one of the guys on Lane Eight's record label. So that's really cool. So I might make more stuff like this in the future. Uh, that's kind of why I now have two um, playlists on Spotify that you can listen to. One called Thorns, that's the more traditional stuff I've been making. One called Petals, that's more of the uh, stuff like this, I guess, that I've been making. So. You can uh, you can listen to that um, on Spotify. I have those playlists there or any of my other music. Uh, if you want to listen to my other music or support me in any way, again, all the links are in the description. You can go to xanderrose.com to do that. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. And as always, happy dancing.